Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and in this series we're creating a detailed game ready axe. In this episode we're looking at complex retopology, so the retopology of the strap in this case, and how we deal with difficult objects like this. If you like what you see here then check out the description for my website and playlist section of my channel for other free courses. Or you can follow the links to my character course where you can learn to make a full game ready detailed character from scratch. Okay so here's where we got to last time and I'm going to work on this strap retopology so I'll zoom in on the strap there and once again I'm going to use a separate mesh to the handle here because if I continue the handle and use the shrink wrap it will shrink wrap to the handle and not the strap so I need a separate mesh so I can use a new shrink wrap and shrink wrap it to this strap here however I do want to keep the flow and the amount of topology and verts going around here so I'll keep that here so I can easily see it one thing I will do though if you have a look, it sticks out quite a lot from the mesh, as you can see there. And that's because we've got above surface and we've got one centimeter above the mesh. And that's quite a lot. It may differ depending on how big your object is. So if I look at the size of mine, you can see the dimensions there. And this is obviously really, really big. It doesn't actually matter too much. It would matter in terms of lighting later on because lighting is affected by the size. It just means you need to play with these values a bit. So if I change this down to something like 0.005, which is half a centimeter, you can see suddenly it goes in a bit more. Now I can kind of line up these areas a little bit easier in here. It does look a little bit strange and I would need to adapt it a bit later on, but that will work as the tidy up right at the very end. This probably isn't too bad, these areas here, because they are actually relatively close. Areas like this, if we have a look, they stick out quite a lot and that's a bit more dubious, especially when you can see it on the outline like this because a normal map on here can't show this kind of bump coming out here. So what we need to do is come around to somewhere in the middle here. It can be fairly rough, but if I shift right click there and create a new object here for my retopology, shift A to add and up to mesh. And I've actually got an add on called mesh tools where I can add a single vert. But if you haven't, then you just add a plane like this into edit mode and then press M to merge at center. And it will do exactly the same thing as that add on. And that's the mesh tools add-on which comes with Blender so you can just tick that in your add-on preferences or just add any object and merge at center. Okay, so I'm in edit mode. So I'm going to move this vertex into the position I'm going to start, which is right at the top here. So G to grab and just move it into that point there. Now we've got snapping on still, so it's snapping to that face when I move it, as you can see there. But I need to add my modifiers now. So first of all, we need the mirror. So add modifier mirror in the Y axis. So I'll turn off the X. And I'll turn on clipping as well so it clips together in the middle. And I'll minimize that and add modifier, shrink wrap modifier. So let's choose the strap as our surface, above surface for the snapping mode and the offset quite low again to 0.005. The last bit we want is the on cage. That makes it just easier to visualize. And you can see how it jumps above the surface to the position where the modifier is when it's in edit mode. So now I should be able to E to extrude and pull this out, but it's not coming with me. And that's because if I go to my mirror, I've got clipping turned on and it's right in the center. So if I turn that off and then press G to grab, I can move it outwards and then I'll turn it back on. <laughs> so E to extrude and I'm following the topology that's in my handle so I can link them up later on. So E to extrude around here and E to extrude. And I'm actually on the very edge of this strap here. So what I'll do when I come to join them together is create another one in the middle here. Okay, so let's produce one coming down this way as well. So E to extrude to the edge of this one, E to extrude downwards. And I'm just following the flow of this strap, E to extrude and E to extrude downwards there. There's a bit of blobbiness there. That should be okay. Okay, now to fill this in, there is things like the poly tool over here, poly build, and that will work okay, but I actually find that a bit fiddly. I actually prefer just simplifying it by extruding and pulling about my mesh. So if I go to edge mode now, and I choose this edge here, I'm choosing this one because it's one away from the edge here, and I'll explain that in a second. So we've got one edge in the middle, I'm going to the second one along, and pressing E to extrude, and pulling it outwards. Oh, and that's not working because I've got clipping on again. So if I turn that off, press G to grab and move it outwards, it starts working, that's better. So I'll bring it out to there, E to extrude down to here for the next one, 
and e to extrude for the next one. And you can see it's warping a bit, e to extrude for the next one. That's fine because we can just go in to vertex mode and one is the keyboard shortcut for that. So I've got my hand over the one there and the G to grab and just slot these into position a bit so they don't have too much overlap like this. So trying to minimize that where possible but also follow the shape of the topology. So I'll bring that one out there, that one in there. It kind of loses its sticky outiness there but that's okay, we can tidy that up. Okay, so the reason I've gone one away, so one edge away rather than doing this one first is because one, I can extrude that nice and easily. If I had grabbed this one, I couldn't extrude it because if I extrude this out and I'll just scale it down there, you can see that it's not attached to this edge here. So I go an extra edge away and then start extruding. Now, because this is in the center, I can't use the fill tool, which is F. So I actually have to do this manually and get both these ones and press F to fill. But I can with this one, if I select this one, because it's not right in the center with the mirror tool, I can press F, F, F like that, and it fills it in. So I'll do the same thing down here to emphasize this point. So with clipping disabled this time, E to extrude, pull it out. Let's rotate that slightly into position, E to extrude, E to extrude, and rotate this one a bit, and E to extrude on the last one. Just tidy those up slightly, go into vertex mode and pulling them into position. I'll probably bring this vertex up there and make sure it snaps correctly and I'll turn clipping back on and bring this one back up just so it's a bit less blobby there it's not sticking out too far so that should be fine now once again we can press 2 to go to edge mode select those two F to fill and then that one F F F to bring it in and fairly quickly I was able to build that up using that format okay so what are we going to do in here this is a bit awkward well if I press 1 to go to vertex mode and then E to extrude that down probably want it to about there and then we want to come out here for this one. So what I'm doing here is following the obvious lines in my mesh. So there's a line around here, but there's also a line coming down here where it digs in. So where there's obvious lines, so coming down here all the way round, in here where you can see I've got one already, and obvious places around here, here and here, that's where you'll definitely need an edge flow so a line of edges. So there's an obvious line down here, so if I come to edge mode with two, select on that one, and right click and subdivide, back to vertex mode with one, I can then extrude this through here, down to the base there, and then I want to fill some of these in. So F to fill there, select that one, FF, and up here as well, FF. So we can see we're following that flow around. So the last one to fill in here, I'll select these two here, E to extrude and pull those inwards and just line up the verts. And then we've actually got a triangle in here. So for now, I'll select them both and press F to fill. Now there's several ways you can deal with the triangle. And in this case, it's not making a huge difference. Now triangles aren't that bad. Lots of people get very worried about them, but they really aren't that big an issue. It all gets converted to triangles before you take it into your game engine anyway. The main reason you want them is if I press Ctrl R now, the loop cut won't go through it. So if I'm trying to do a loop cut around here and add topology, I can't do that through a triangle. And that actually makes triangles slightly useful in that sense, because I can break up an edge flow without it having to come into here and then all the way down here as well. So if I press 2 and come to this edge, right click on it and subdivide, I've now got a quad. And I'll just press G to grab to move that out so you can kind of see the quad easier. If I press Ctrl R now, it comes to here and to here, which I might really not want that edge flow to happen. So for now, I'm going to undo that and leave the triangle in. The most important places where you really must have quads is around edges like this. So if I select that edge loop going around there, and again, I can select edge loops as long as it follows a vertex that has four edges going into it. And I can press Ctrl R to do a loop cut and I could easily add some topology if I wanted to maybe sharpen one of these points up. Or I could select this edge loop and press Ctrl B to bevel and I can bevel that. So it makes it a lot easier modeling with quads and that's why we keep to quads. Now there are other ways of tidying this up and we can change the edge flow and all sorts, but what I want to do is wait till we do the ax head here and then I'll see how much topology I need for this area. Until then, there's no point changing this topology around here. 
So there's quite a lot of information there, so I'll pause it there and continue in the next session. The main bits of information to get out of this is that your edge flow should follow the edges of your object. So where there's an edge of the strap, that's where your edge flow is going to go. In the next episode, I'll talk about more complex areas where there's big dents and crevices and how we can tidy those up and show you more of the process that I'm going through here. So do make sure you comment below with any thoughts that you have and maybe you do it in a different way. And lastly, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.